Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. It seemed like love at first sight for Michael DiPolito and his wife, Dahlia. The Boynton Beach, Florida couple met online, went on a few dates, and then rushed to get married. But the honeymoon didn't last long because Dahlia had other plans. Dahlia wanted Michael's money and his house. Within six months, she had her name on the deed and... $240,000. Now she needed to get rid of Michael. Police say that she turned to an ex-boyfriend to help her hire a hitman. Instead, he turned Dahlia into the police and they set up a sting. And as stings go, it's one of the best I've ever seen. Undercover cops videotaped the deal to kill Michael and cops set up a phony murder and crime scene with cameras rolling. They capture the moment the police tell Dahlia that her husband is dead. We'll show you her grieving widow performance in just a minute. Dahlia was arrested for solicitation of murder and convicted in 2011. She was sentenced to 20 years. Her attorneys appealed the decision and a judge overturned her conviction. So she had a second trial in 2016, but the jury deadlocked. Dahlia had a third trial in 2017 and was convicted of solicitation of murder. She was sentenced to 16 years in prison, but Dahlia feels she deserves a fourth trial. In 2019, the Florida Supreme Court denied hearing her appeal. And then in 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court also refused to hear her case. Dahlia is scheduled to be released from prison in 2032. Let's take a look back at the case of a woman who tried hiring a hitman to kill her husband only to be caught in her own trap. Michael DiPolito and his new wife, Dahlia, are a young, good-looking couple. And they're living the good life in Boynton Beach, Florida, about an hour's drive north of Miami. The two meeting on an online dating site. Michael falling fast for the stunning Dahlia. He uh, called her up, made an arrangement. She showed up at his office. He liked what he saw. Within a short period of time, he divorced his wife and he found himself married to Dahlia. Reporter and crime writer Mark Ebner covered the couple's bizarre case from day one. And he says Dahlia is a woman who knows where she wants to go in life and wastes very little time getting there. In fact, in the days after their honeymoon, he says Dahlia's immediate destination is Michael's bank account to the tune of $240,000. She put her claws in him so fast in a six-month time span, managed to take all of Michael DiPolito's money. She managed to get his home deeded over to her. But all that is not enough. She has everything she wants, but she reportedly wants it all to herself. According to Ebner, there's only one solution. Michael must go, dead or alive. She would have everything. The flowers from her wedding are still alive, court records show she approaches a former boyfriend to get advice on terminating her husband. His name is Mohammed Shihadi, a part-time actor and convenience store owner. She asked Mohammed if he could find her a guy who would get the job done, i.e. a hitman. Ebner says Mohammed realizes he may be dealing with a woman who is a bit unstable. He does the right thing and pays a visit to the Boynton Beach Police Department. He says, I know this woman, she's trying to kill, have her husband killed. Ultimately, they said, look, you're going to have to have to help us with this. And he agreed. Detectives put a wire on Mohammed and a pinhole camera in the back seat of his car. Then they send him off to meet Dahlia with a story about a hitman he has found to do the job. This is the actual undercover police recording. Okay, after he killed him, whatever, your mom and all of them are not going to, like, his mom is not going to get suspicious of you or anything like that. Why me? Like, killing somebody? Come on. Nobody's going to be able to point a finger at me. Muhammad tells Dahlia the gunman needs some money up front. I brought brought 1,200. Like, that's all I brought, George. Like, I'll give you 20 once it's done. After Dahlia leaves the car and the coast is clear, cops call Muhammad on a speakerphone while he's still in the car. Hello? Mohammed. Yes. Where's she going? To get the money or what? No, she gave me the money. 
gave you the money. Yeah. Not only did they have her uh, soliciting the murder of her husband verbally, they had her handing Mohammed cash in order to pay a hitman with. But it just gets deeper. Investigators up the ante. They send in undercover officer Witty Jean posing as a hitman to seal the deal. When it's done, you know, you have to have an officer to change your money. No, there's no, like, I'm, I'm determined already. I'm positive, like, 5,000% okay. Charlotte. Okay. No, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. She even throws in a hefty bonus to have Michael gunned down in public. going to be going to the bank on Wednesday. I don't know if, you the know, bank. yeah, I don't know if that's in public for you. And he's, he's leaving the house by 8, 8.30, he's going to go get $10,000. Yeah. I could do it like that, but it is public. I'll get the money. But the thing about it is that it's a harder get away. She's saying, you know, well, I'm not giving you much money up front, but guess what? If you cap my husband in front of that bank, help yourself to the 10 grand. But the hitman has a better idea. He wants to take Michael out at home. All she has to do is give him the keys and disappear. Then he's going to have to be at the house. You know, he gets two in the head. That's it. You know, I take a couple things with me, first a couple windows, make it look like a robbery that went bad. Dahlia has to think about it. She's not sure which is worse, a dead husband or having a stranger in the house. So, uh, how about the keys in the house? Um, I talked out that I didn't make a copy of it. Because I, wasn't, I wanted to talk to you about Wednesday to see if Wednesday was going to work out better. Here she's hired a, uh, a hitman that she doesn't even know, and now he wants to get in her house. Well, we get to see what she's made of shortly thereafter. The deadly deal is done. There's no changing. No, there's no, like, I'm, I'm determined already. I'm positive, like, 5,000% sure. After making arrangements with an undercover cop posing as a hitman, police say that Dahlia DiPolito is fully on board. She believes that her husband Michael will be shot dead in the home she shares with him early on the following Wednesday morning. He gets two in the head. Two to the head. Boom, boom. Right there. So now they have her re-soliciting for murder with an undercover hitman. And still, the story gets deeper and darker. Crime writer Mark Ebner co-wrote the book on the case called Poison Candy with lead prosecutor Elizabeth Parker. So she agrees to get out of the house. She makes the house accessible to the hitman. But don't forget Dahlia's also worried about having a strange man in the house. She thinks that he's a killer, which is fine by her, but he might also be a thief. Before she leaves the house, she scoops up all her jewelry, about $80,000 worth of jewelry, throws it in her bag, and she goes to the gym. Meanwhile, police lay their trap back at the house. First, they have to clue in her husband, Michael, about what's happening. He's home in bed recovering from liposuction surgery. Later on, he'll describe his reaction to a judge. I obviously looked like I was in shock or something, and uh, that's when the guy blurted out, Listen, you have to come with us. Your wife's, wife's going to have you killed today. Well, I stood there, and I kind of looked around, and I, I I see a bunch of cameras in the bushes or wherever, and I just kind of said, what the hell is it? Like, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Outside on the street, police have already set up a true-to-life crime scene, as if Michael is already dead in the house. M Michael DiPolito's reaction was one of utter shock. He felt like he was walking into an episode of Cops, and guess what? He was. It's true. Police have invited a TV crew from the show Cops to make sure they get it all on camera. When everything is ready to go, an officer on the scene makes a call to Dahlia. No, ma'am, I need to talk to you. It's very urgent when you come home. It involves your husband. There's been an incident. Okay, can you come right back to your residence, please? Yeah, I'm leaving right now. Are you okay? Ma'am, I'll tell you everything you need to know when you get here, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. A seemingly worried Dahlia arrives in minutes. And what happens next should be in the Murder for Hire Hall of Fame. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am. He's been killed. No, 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 no. He's been killed, ma'am. No, no, he's not. Listen. No, no. Try to calm down. No. Listen, no, right now, what no, we, do, we need to get to the no, station. No, we need to get to the police station. I, we, I can't let you stand, man. We have to do our job. No. 
it's a raw, emotional scene. Unless you're seeing it through the eyes of someone who really knows this case. Before he even gets the word killed or shot out of his mouth, she's got her head on his chest, she's falling over. My Who he's connected to. Don't house. worry, we've already taken care of dogs with animal control Wait. for right now. All of a sudden, it gets really strange because she doesn't really have much concern for the welfare of her husband as much as she's worried about her dogs. Police take Dahlia back to the station and sit her down. They start by playing along, asking if her husband had any enemies who might want him dead. Well, when we got there, your door was wide open. He was found in the bedroom. He was shot twice in the head. He wouldn't open the door unless it's somebody that he knows. I want to know if you know this guy. Come here. They bring in a special guest. Bring this guy in here. It's undercover officer Woody Jean, still in his role as the hitman. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? Never seen him. Do you know her? Put your head up and look at her. Put your head up. What were you doing coming out of her house? And suddenly, it's the cops who drop the act. They're done playing around. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did, recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail for solicitation of first degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I heard you. I didn't do anything. And this was her mantra throughout the entire conversation. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What do you want to do here? I didn't Dying do anything. It. Listen to me. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail. I didn't jail. do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. We'll stand up. Stand up, please. We'll go ahead and arrest her for solicitation of first degree murder. I did it. I think Dilly's still alive. Even when she gets the chance to call her mother, the song remains the same. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You did. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Okay. Well, then... They showed me pictures. They showed me a tape, Mama. I did not do anything. They told me Mike was dead. They were at my house this morning. And then okay. I left with the officers. How many times did I told you to leave that guy? How many times did I tell you that guy? It's the number one murder for hire video of the year. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, he's been killed. No, 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 no. Dahlia's acting job when she's told about the supposed murder of her husband is a YouTube sensation. And when we call it Dahlia's reality show, we're serious because that's exactly what she calls it herself. In fact, it's the keystone of her defense. She did not testify at her trial. But another recent court appearance on the case pretty much reveals the strategy. And now you come to the court and you, 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 your whole goal in this thing was to get publicity. Is that true? To get to become a, a reality TV star? Killing somebody? Come on. Nobody's going to be able to point a finger at me. That was part of the script, too? Yes. <clears throat> you heard right. Dahlia says she and Mohammed, and yes, even Michael himself, were only putting together a tape to pitch a reality show and that they use the cops to play along. She thought it was a reality show. Where's the production company? Where's the script? Where are the actual cameras? There's none of that. And Mohammed told you to say that I'm a lot tougher than I look. I had to go in that meeting with Woody Jean and as though, you know, that's what I wanted to have done. This is a product of her own imagination and it's unfathomable that she thinks she can hang a defense on that. But in reality, Dahlia says nothing about any such show when she has Michael on the phone after her arrest. There's no talk about reality shows, only Dahlia's very real situation. It gives me time so I can talk to you. What is it going to say? I saw it. I heard it. I saw what you saw and I heard what you heard. Okay, well, what, and what the said you wanted to have me killed? I heard that. It's not true. It's not true. How is it not true? So why would you need a parking lot and hand $1,200 and say, yes, I, I want them dead. What could I possibly do for you? I don't get it. What could I do? You're not even trying. Trying what? I'm f***ing here like a dumb Her old boyfriend, Mohammed, who worked as an undercover informant for the police, says it was no reality show. 
I brought, I brought 1,200. Up. Like, that's all I brought. I'll give you 20 once it's done. And Michael himself gets grilled about it on the stand. Did you ever try out for a reality show? No. Did you ever have aspirations to be on a reality show? No. Did you ever write a script for a reality show? No. Did you ever act out any scenarios with a defendant for a reality show? No. Incredibly, the defense insists that the real criminal is Michael, who set everything up to get rid of Dahlia. Just like everything else in his life, Mr. DiPolito has duped somebody again. He's duped them into representing to you that he is a victim in this case. This was cold, calculated, premeditated. In her evil, warped mind, the only option is to murder him. The jury has no problem reaching a verdict. Daya DiPolito was convicted of solicitation for murder and was sentenced by the judge to 20 years. It was pure evil. You were taking advantage of a guy that was gullible, that was in love with you. Michael DiPolito is relieved, and most of all, he's still alive. As far as the sentence, I'm 5,000% happy with it. I didn't want any of this. You know, and I, I feel bad for her in a way of, uh, not like it's my wife I feel bad. I feel bad for her that she's, she's a lost person. But not so fast. Like a lot of reality shows, this one has a twist. Dahlia's attorneys come right back and file an appeal. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house and there were shots fired. Remember that video police released before the trial? Man, he's been killed. No, 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 no. He's, he's been killed, man. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Her attorneys say because it was such a YouTube sensation, some of the jurors may have seen that tape and formed an opinion on her guilt. They also claim the jurors were not questioned properly about the pretrial publicity before being chosen. And in this episode of Dahlia's Deadly Deal, the judge agrees. The judge, in his wisdom, granted her an appeal bond and put her under house arrest. So here we are, several years later. And Dahlia is in a very unique position. She's been granted a new trial. But when that trial kicks off, it isn't a rerun with the same cast and the same evidence. Colonel, call Mr. Polito. Dahlia did not testify in her first trial. But this time around, she takes the stand for a pretrial hearing, still claiming it was all just a TV drama. None of it was real. I had no reason to believe that he was, he was going to get hurt. Dahlia also introduces a new character. While on house arrest, waiting for the third trial to start, Dahlia becomes a mom to a little boy who's almost one. And Michael is not the father. She should be given some latitude. How would this trial end? At least one person in the know says it's only a matter of percentages. But this is South Florida, so anything can happen. But I would say I'm 5,000% sure she's gonna get reconvicted. And Ebner was 5,000% correct. Dahlia was just reconvicted of solicitation of first-degree murder and sent off to prison for 16 years. The Dahlia soap opera is finally over, or so we thought. Her attorney immediately appeals her sentence and asks for house arrest. The judge had granted it before and may have done it again, but then this happens. Eric, uh, guy in Texas. Dahlia is caught on tape again, this time talking on a phone from behind bars to her baby daddy about a plot to escape from prison using a drone. Had somebody wire drone over and drop off wire cutters, and he cut wires and escaped from prison. Oh, that's awesome. He put what a genius. He put a gummy in his bed and he had an 18 hour head start. After hearing that, the judge dropped the gavel. So for now, this femme fatale sits behind bars, but she's currently appealing her conviction. And the final scene has yet to play out in the true life soap opera of how the world turns for Dahlia DiPolito.